Last week's Torah portion ended with a cliffhanger, with the mysterious viceroy of Egypt, who's actually Joseph, Yosef, telling the brothers that he's going to keep the youngest one of them, Benjamin, Benjamin, as a prisoner, after framing Benjamin on trumped-up charges of theft. This week's Torah portion begins with one of the brothers, Judah, Yehuda, confronting and challenging the ruler. Yehuda delivers one of the most impassioned, inspiring, persuasive bits of oral advocacy in history. I can only think of one other one that even comes close. What? Over? Did you say over? Nothing is over until we decide it is. Was it over when the Germans bombed Pearl Harbor? Germans? Forget it, he's rolling. And it ain't over now. Kidding aside, Yehuda's words are so powerful that they break Yosef down. With his last remaining bit of self-control, he ushers the Egyptians out of the room, and then he reveals himself to his brothers. But think about that. Yosef is the master of self-control. He's the same person who, as a teenager, was able to resist the daily amorous advances of the beautiful wife of his master. And now his self-control is broken down because Yehuda just happened to randomly coincidentally say the right thing without knowing the true identity of the person to whom he was speaking? Maybe, but maybe not. I think perhaps Yehuda figured it out and knew consciously or subconsciously the identity of the person to whom he was speaking. Think of all the clues that he would have had. This mysterious ruler was so interested in the family, asking repeatedly about their father and their youngest brother. The Medrash says that when the brothers returned with Benjamin, Yosef sat them down in age order and then rattled off their names in order, Reuven, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda, etc. And why couldn't they recognize him? Rashi tells us the reason is that when they sold him as a slave, he didn't have a beard. And now, years later, he did have one. But Rashi also tells us that Yosef was a doppelganger, the spitting image of his father, Jacob, Yaakov, which means when they confronted the viceroy, would have been looking at the youthful image of their father. Maybe they didn't recognize him because they couldn't bring themselves to do that. Because that would have meant not only admitting that they were wrong to have sold him, but that those dreams of his, those dreams that drove them crazy, the dreams that he'd become their ruler, had come true. Until one of them, their leader, Yehuda, broke through and was able to confront the truth. He was able to piece together the puzzle, realizing, like Sherlock Holmes would have said, that when you've eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. And boy, that truth must have been painful and awkward and embarrassing. But that's what leaders have to do. They have to stand up to the truth, not shirk from it. And that's what Yehuda did. Look and compare what Yaakov actually said in Genesis 42, verse 30, with what Yehuda changes the quote to say in Genesis 44, 27 through 29. Yaakov said very little. Yehuda expands it. He starts talking about Yaakov's wife, whom Yaakov never mentioned, who happens to be Yosef's mother. And he changes Yaakov's wording from, if you don't bring Benjamin back, I'll go down to the grave in sorrow, to, I'll go down to the grave in wickedness. Maybe he's telling Yosef, I know who you are, and I don't know what game you're playing, but don't do this. Think of your mother. Think of your father. Don't do it. It'll be wicked. And that's what breaks Yosef down. Every single word measured to have an impact on Yosef, not on some mysterious ruler of Egypt. Yehuda shows us what it takes to be a leader. And that's why we're named after him. We're called Jews because we're Yehudim, named after Yehuda, because we're meant to be leaders, to confront the truth, to stand for the truth, and to stand up for the truth, no matter how difficult or painful or embarrassing or awkward. We suffer our lumps and our persecutions and our punishments and our exiles, and we get up off the mat, dust ourselves off, and keep going. We understand how important it is to never shirk from the truth, because we know. The going gets tough! The tough get going! Who's with me? Let's go! Come on!